Kelly Donahoe and the Blue Springs Wildcats know about big victories. Earlier this season, they upset the defending state champions, Rockers, at Dasta Memorial Stadium 21-7. The Cats are now 9-0 on the year and rated number one in the Metro Sports Poll. Tonight, they take on their crosstown rivals, the 8-1 Jaguars of Blue Springs South, rated number 10. City bragging rights, the District 13 title on the line tonight, next on Metro Sports. This is 3.30 in the afternoon at PV Stadium in Blue Springs. Fans already saving seats with blankets and seat cushions for tonight's big matchup. Blue Springs South, Blue Springs. And look at the fans filing in here. It'll be jam-packed, over 10,000 expected for this battle between number one and number 10 for the District 13 title. Hi everybody, Kevin White with you here on the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week here on Metro Sports. Well, these two teams have been squaring off since 1994 and some big games, big name players, and oddly enough, this cat fight all even at three wins apiece with Blue Springs coming from behind, down 10-6 at halftime, winning last year 20-10. My broadcast partner, all pro offensive lineman from the Kansas City Chiefs, Will Shields, and Blue Springs South relies heavily on their quarterback, the junior, Jonathan Cairns. He has to have a big game tonight. That's right, and we saw Johnny Carrington in earlier in the year, and he played excellent as he played earlier in the year. Right now, we can see him learning the rollout pass, throwing an excellent ball. He has about 100, he has over 1,000 yards passing, and he has 600 on the ground by himself. And as far as Blue Springs, their money player has to be Andrew Tuggle. He is outstanding. Andrew Tuggle is a tough back. That's one thing they want to do is actually get him inside the tackles, let him rumble in there, play as hard as he can. On the year, he has over 1,500 yards on the ground, and he's averaging 8.2, which is difficult to do, especially in this tough, this tough division. They had 170 yards and two touchdowns last week. Undefeated Blue Springs taking on Blue Springs South. The game faces are set. This cat fight is ready to commence. The kickoff next on Metro Sports. The high school game of the week is brought to you by High V and their 20 Kansas City area employee owned High V locations. Farmers Insurance and these Kansas City Metro agents. Contact your local farmers agent today. Remember, farmers get you back where you belong. Brandsmart, the big screen store. KC Bobcat in Blue Springs, Grandview, and Olathe. And by AMC Theaters. Back here at PV Memorial Stadium in Blue Springs, where a seat, folks, is. Well, tough commodity. It is packed and the fans are jacked up tonight for Blue Springs and Blue Springs South. And the Wildcats come in undefeated, rated number one in the Metro Sports Bowl. And Blue Springs South, led by that man, Greg Oder, at eight and one. And they're rated number 10. Greg Oder in his first year. He's an assistant here for a long time, nine years. The defensive coordinator also was a head coach at Plattsburgh. He's a native of Milan, Missouri, former Truman State defensive back, and doing a good job with the Jaguars in his first year. Buddy Young, the former head coach, stepped down. He wanted to devote more time to the activity director's job at Blue Springs South High School. So Greg Oder is now the new head coach there. And for Blue Springs, it's Kelly Donahoe. In his second year, what a record, 19 and two. And his team undefeated this year, last year, 10 and two. Former University of Kansas quarterback. Also was an assistant, keep in mind, for a number of years at Blue Springs South. Point toss going on with the captains on the field. Referee Phil Stompoli will do the flipping of the coin. The 
Lee Springs has won the toss and deferred their option to the second half. So the Jaguars of Blue Springs South will get the football first here. The only loss for the Jaguars this year to Liberty as they lost to William Jewell 48 to 26. Against the Blue Springs Wildcats, a number of big victories this year. Wins over Rockhurst, Liberty, Oak Park. Trying to make it back-to-back -back suburban Big 8 titles. And their fans are raring to go in the purple and gold tonight. Last year, very close ball game. Blue Springs actually trailed at halftime 10 to 6 before they got things going and won that ball game 20 to 10. Mentioned at the top, the series all even at three apiece. But clearly, Blue Springs is the favorite. Blue Springs South is the underdog. And the Jaguars relish that role. They want to mess up the perfect season for the Wildcats. And they want to go to the playoffs. And his deep back will be Felix Figueroa for the Jaguars to take this kick. Special teams going out now for Blue Springs is Josh Barge, the sensational athlete, all-state wide receiver. State champion hurdler will kick it off here for Blue Springs in the all-purple uniforms. Jaguars will be in the white, blue, and green. The 2001 Battle of Blue Springs is underway. And a nice kick return up near the 18-yard line for the Blue Springs South Jaguars is Matt Ferguson with the return. Quarterback is Jonathan Cairns. He's only a junior, but over a thousand yards passing, 12 touchdown passes. The leading rusher on the team with over 600 yards rushing and eight TDs. And those are the passing numbers. First and ten as Ferguson goes in motion. Now, Cairns will go into a shotgun look here. This is a four wide team. Quick pass to the out, and it's incomplete. Checking Blue Springs South up front. Two-time all-conference player anchors the line. Brandon Weems at left tackle. Julian Zimmerman, Moth Green, and Waltz Lewick. Max in the backfield for Tony Matsky and Jared Opp. And a good four of wide receivers for Jonathan Cairn. Second down and 10 now. And a little dive play straight up the gut. That's Tony Matsky for short yardage on the play. Defensively for the Blue Springs Wildcats, only giving up seven and a half points per game. And they're tough up front, but the linebacking core is the real source of this defensive strength. Byer, Ringwood, Weatherspoon, and Pike. And up Troy anchoring that secondary as you take a look at Darius Weatherspoon. Third down now. And Karen's in trouble and going down. Bruce Ringwood, number 20 there to shut that play down. It'll be fourth down and punting time now for the Jaguars. Good pressure on the fourth, uh, third down play. Third and long, he spread them out, run a little bounce motion on the backside. See, he's not fooled on the play, reads it, and actually has a, a good surge on the inside by the defensive line. Karen's also the punter on this team, averaging 38.4 yards per punt. Deep back is Curtis Cooper, and this one nearly blocked. We'll let this one hit, and it takes a huge Jaguar roll inside the 20 down near the 16-yard line. And a very long punt 
And the Wildcats will be backed up to start their first drive with Justin Whitworth. He is the fine quarterback. What a ratio. 17 touchdown passes to two INTs. Near the 15 yard line, first and 10. Vaughn and Tuggle. A line and an eye toss sweep to Tuggle. And he goes for a short gain on the play as Josh Taylor makes the stop for the Jaguars. Offensively up front for the Wildcats Taylor, Brown, Sego, Callaway, and Warren Brock. Leading rusher is Andrew Tuggle with over 1,500 yards. On the top wide out, Josh Barge, number 22. Second down and seven now for Whitworth and the Wildcats. Give it to the fullback, breaking a tackle. Across the 20 to the 22-yard line. Jared Ott made the defensive stop, and as we check the Jaguars defensively, Watts, Lewick, Williams, Julian, and Lofgreen up front. Top tacklers, Jared Opp, Tony Matsky, and Josh Taylor, also a very good linebacking core. And safeties, and big surprises, doing a great job, Loomis and Shamblin for Blue Springs South. There you see them. The kids have really impressed the coaches. Loomis actually has three interceptions for the season. It'll be third down and a couple here now for the Wildcats. And Tuggle is blown up. No gain. Jared Opp got in there along with Josh Taylor. And it'll be fourth down at punting time now for the Wildcats. Three, in, well, three running plays from the beginning. A pitch left, pitch right, run the fullback up. Right here is just a basic pitch to the left side and more like a dive. They use the pitch action trying to stretch the defense. The defense does a good job of blowing up the lineman into the backfield and making a solid play. Matt Jones to punt it away for Blue Springs, averaging 34.2 yards per punt. The back will be Matt Ferguson. Also, Jonathan Cairns, the quarterback, fielding at the 33, making a man miss. Gets a great block, turning the corner is Cairns across the 50, down the sidelines, pushed out. And there is a flag on the play, however, and this may be coming back. Good kick, good positioning on the ball. On the return, what happened was that he actually got back across the field. They had over pursuit. He ran all the way outside. And we have a clipping at the end of the run. Something that you don't want to see is that the simple fact that he had already made it already beyond the first wave. And then right at the end of the run, you'll see coming into your screen from the bottom a clip. Right here, you see a clean block coming to your screen there. And he goes ahead and cuts around here. And right here at the end of the block, you see him come right about there, the clip block, where actually you can catch him, actually catch him from the backside, which was a block that wasn't necessary. You can see his back, let him go. Cost him some costly field position. Yeah, it was over 27 yards on that return. And it's all coming back on the clip. All will be spotted back to the 42, and Blue Springs South is on. Ball game for the District 13 title. The winner goes to the state playoffs. The loser's season will end tonight. Out of emotion with two cross town rivals squaring off. Cairns with the go route incomplete, looking for Matt Ferguson. It'll be second down and 10. It's a little misfire on the ball, a little too much steam. It's a little early in the game to get the jitters and everything else, and trying to get it out. Quick turn, trying to just get the timing right outside. Just a little too far. Ferguson coming in with 11 catches and three TD catches. Andy Strope is the leading pass catcher with 18. Second down and 10 out of the shotgun now. A little option look, pitching it out to Jared Opp. Turns the corner, gets out to the 47. 
And a pickup of about five on the play before he's ushered out. Jared Opp, a guy, Will, that's a state wrestling champion from 171 last year. This guy's a tough kid. Had a couple of touchdowns last week in the win over Lee Summit. Well, it's sort of like uh, most things you notice. Once you see a team have an effective uh, view on it as far as offense, all teams go to it. They're running the spread open off, uh, offense that OU is similar to how they run, and they had good uh, the good runs on it last year, so everybody's sort of using it, that wide open offense this year. Third down and four. Cairns rolling near side, gunning the middle, diving catches made for a first down by Matt Ferguson. What a catch! Great catch. What was even better was the throw. He put the, the throw right in between the scenes of the zone. Right here, you're going to see they, they move the quarterback, roll out, they give him some extra time, sets his feet. Puts it right in between the zone. Had good coverage on the ball, but just put the ball in a perfect position for the wide receiver to make the play. First and 10, ball at the 37 yard line. And this play going to be blown up. Defensive end Joe Bach, number 99, able to shut that play down. And they'll lose yardage as they'll lose yardage back to the. 41. It'll be a loss of four. Defensive end, defensive linebacker playing their keys. Defensive end has the quarterback. You see in the back, back there that the actual corner, or uh, actually linebacker has the pitch man. So the quarterback didn't have any options on that play. Second out and long now for Karens. 4 0 student at Blue Springs South. Now gunning, and the pass is caught. And taking it at the distance will be J.D. Lawrence. Touchdown, Jaguars. Perfect Hitting, timing there. Hit him on a slant route. They gave him the option. They run it like they're going to run the slip screen to the right, run the slant route with the outside wide receiver, and he puts the ball on the string. And he splits the defenders. Right here, you see he has the little out route there and puts the ball on the string, places it perfectly on the front shoulder, actually the back shoulder of the wide receiver. All he has to do is cradle it in and split the defenders to the end zone. Six nothing Jaguars, 6-14 to play here in your initial quarter. Fourth touchdown catch of the season for J.D. Lawrence. He's a senior. Thirteenth touching touchdown pass by Jonathan Cairns as the extra point is through there. Brad Coleman makes it 7 0. Blue Springs South. Notice all of his passes have been quick touch passes. As soon as he gets the ball, makes a quick read. Puts a, puts a great speed, a speed on the ball to get it there. He took a, a hit straight in the face as he was delivering the ball. So the Jaguars strike first in this battle of Blue Springs. J.D. Lawrence with the touchdown catch of 41 yards. Greg Oder, first-year coach, has to be happy with the start here. Teed up. Deep back is Chris Miller. It's going to be fielded as they hand it off. And getting away is Jeff Troy as he runs across the 30 near the 35 yard line. A little trickery by the Wildcats there as they hand it off on the kickoff. Trying to run the reverse on the kickoff return. Get, get all the defenders going one way. Take the take the handoff right here and try to reverse it around where you only have two defenders left on the outside. Makes one miss, but in doing so, it gave him enough time to trip him up long enough for the defenders to make up the ground. Good game passing last week and the win over the Broncos for Justin Whitworth. From the 35 after the nice return by Jeff Troy. Wildcats going to work on a quarterback option, pitching it out to Tuggle, and he'll lose yardage. Good pursuit to the outside by the safeties there. Jonathan Cairns came up, also Brett Shamblin 
Tuggle just couldn't turn the corner, Will. Well, what happened there is actually they strung the play out very well. Everybody played played into the, def uh, the offensive guy, stayed on their feet, slid sideways. You're going to watch the whole line. There's only one guy that goes down. See the rest of them? They're pushing off their man, playing sideways, making him play the ball to the sideline, pitch it, and before he could get vertical, the safeties and corners comes up and make the play. Tony Matsky also there. It's going to be second down and 12 now for the Wildcats. Vaughn going in motion. Short drop. Quick pass to Curtis Cooper. Incomplete. So it's going to be third down and long for the Wildcats here. Well, I think it's just so right now. They're early in the game. They're trying to make things happen. They want to do it. Hit them fast and score points. Just a little too much zip on the ball. Throws a little dirt dauber there. They need him to settle down, move the chains, get out of this field position, and set the tone on the other end of the field. Third down and 12 for the Wildcats. There's the ball at their own 33-yard line. Whitworth on the roll. Looking to the near side, and the receiver slipped down. It'll fall incomplete. And fourth down and 12 now in punting time for Blue Springs. One of the most difficult things for a quarterback to do is to throw the ball on the run. What he was trying to do here is just a simple roll out to the right. He feels the, pr the pursuit inside out there, and he doesn't get a chance to actually set his feet, so he actually just threw it away to the outside so that the defender didn't, didn't get the sack. See the pressure coming here from the inside out? He didn't get a chance to set his feet so that he could have looked to his second or third uh, receiver as they went down the field. And we're looking for Josh Barge. He lost his footing. Matt Jones to punt it away. Nice high spiraling punt here. And this will be fielded by Cairns. Cairns making guys miss. Good return up near the 35-yard line. Well, this is the first time he's returned punts all year, and now you know why he's back there. Well, he's getting good blocks right here, and actually the kicker is out kicking his coverage. They come, they break down in front of him. Right there is the block that sort of frees him to go back inside and to break that run. He's getting good help as guys are peeling back and actually blocking these guys as they're coming back to make the play. Under five to play in your first quarter. Blue Springs South has it back, leading seven to nothing on a 41-yard touchdown pass from Cairns to J.D. Lawrence. Straight up the gut. Jared up into the secondary across the midfield stripe. Josh Barge got him at the 45 and a big-time run. Looked like the defense had a little confusion there. Cutting back and forth. You're going to see it open up on the left side. They saw the guy going in there before the reverse. Don't play the keys inside. It opens a hole here on the left side. Untouched until he gets to the safety. 21 yards for Jared Opp. First and 10 at the 45 in Blue Springs territory for the Jaguars of Blue Springs South. On the option, Cairns cuts it up. He's got a first down and more down to the 30-yard line. Big chunks now for the Jaguars. As this time, he goes for 17. Good decision-making by the quarterback. You're going to see him run the option down the left, to the left side here, fake it to the fullback. Fullback has a little block, takes two. He cuts underneath. Good positive run. Good positive run. You like to have a quarterback just make his decision, plant his foot, and get vertical up the field. Get as many as you can and get down. So his knee hit at the 30, so they spot him there. 15 yards in the game. First and 10, nonetheless, for the Jaguars. Already leading 7 to nothing. Karen's going to keep it. He's got more running room. He sprints into the secondary inside the 5. And down near the 1-yard line is Jonathan Karen's. It'll be first and gold now for Blue Spring South. Well, they had a setup block here on the inside. He sends the guy in motion. The right tackle actually punches the end. You're going to see the guy in motion, and they crack the guy on the outside, and that's what springs him. And they just sort of overload the right side, and he gets, gets into the open field. Right now, it's great blocking. Saving tackle by Curtis Cooper. Greg Oder says our wideouts, as the ball came loose there at the end of the play, Greg Oder mentioned his wideouts really do a good job of blocking. 
And they give it to Opp, and a flag on the play as he goes nowhere. Good job by the defensive line for Blue Springs to clog things up. And Phil Stompoli says there's a flag coming up here on the Jaguars. Illegal motion against the offense, five yard penalty, repeat first down. You ready? Big penalty here, Will, as you have it at the one yard line. Now you're gonna be first and goal from the six yard line. So well, penalties in this area are really Well, with their spread offense, it might actually help them. It gives them a more room to work with in the back of the end zone. Kelly Groom is the offensive coordinator. And straight up the gut goes Jared Opp. And there's not much running room there as he's shut down. The linebacker's there. Weatherspoon, also Billy Byer. And there's nothing here, Will. Well, you see the, the linebacker actually slips the first guy and actually meets the back in the hole. Meets him about two yards deep. You see right here the linebacker slips underneath the block and meets the fullback in the hole. Reads his keys well and then just stays, stays at home. Second and goal from the five now. Ferguson motion, they give it to him, coming around the end, he dives to the end zone! No signal yet. Well, I guess it's a touchdown. The officials the last two ball games don't seem to signal touchdowns, I guess. Well, it seems like I think they lost the ball to begin with, and then they sort of go back and just say, everybody saw it was in, they don't want to signal that he made it into the end zone. Handoff, wide open hole there, he just powers his way in over two defenders on the outside. Five yard touchdown run by Ferguson. Coleman's extra point is through there. And right now, number 10 trying to pull off the upset, leading 14 to nothing over Blue Springs. Just the around from the, from the motion from the outside. Two thirty to play in the first quarter. Thus far, all Blue Springs South. The blue and green on one side, the purple and gold on the other, but I guarantee you right now, the purple and gold a little shocked as they're down 14 to nothing. And the Jaguars feel like, uh, a little like the Mets and Yankees. Blue Springs is the Yankees, and the Mets are Blue Springs South, and feel like they're the second banana here. They play the underdog role well, and the underdog looking good right now, leading 14 to nothing here. Coming out strong with two quick scoring drives. And kick away. Good special teams play. Plays off the block and makes the play right on the 20-yard line. Brandon Sessler got lit up on the play there, and Tony Matsky a little slow to get up. I'd like to thank the fine folks at Rental Service Corporation for their help with tonight's broadcast. You can call them toll-free, 1-800-RENT-RSC for all your rental needs. First and 10 from the 20 now for Blue Springs. Down by two touchdowns. Late stages of the first quarter. Pitch out the tunnel. Ball is loose. It's on the field. Covered up. Felix Figueroa has it. It'll be first and goal for the Jaguars. Well, one thing you don't want to happen is a team that's on the roll that's put up 14 points in the first quarter, you don't want to give them a turnover inside of the 10. They're marking it at the 9 here, Will. And the quarterback got hit. Pitch was bad. And That's a tough thing to do. When you run an option down here, the quarterback's in his grass. He tries to make a play happen. Mishandles the pitch because he has a guy riding on his back and, and actually just sort of makes Tuggle sort of fumble the ball. It looks like he might have jammed his fingers when he actually went for the ball and the guy fell on top of him. The guy that 
really messed up that play was Jeff Williams, number 55. He got in there and got on Whitworth, caused the bad pitch. There is Jeff on the sidelines. Young man that was a fullback in this program, but they converted him to a lineman. Just a tremendous student, all around guy. District vice president of the DECA program. So the Jaguars have come out scratching hard here. As the number 10 team looking for the big upset tonight. It's undefeated number one, Blue Springs. Coming up next week, we'll have Kansas 6A substate action. It'll be Friday night, 7 p.m. And then we'll have Missouri sectional action. It's Oak Park and Rockers. Play Wednesday, it'll air Friday at 10.30 p.m. First and goal now for Blue Spring South. Officially marked the ball at the nine yard line for Jonathan Cairns. Quick pass to the outside. Felix Figueroa's got it and he's going nowhere as Curtis Cooper will throw him down. He'll lose yardage on the play. They were ready for that play that time. Good Will. job for them to settle on the play. That's actually the play that they used to set up the scoring drive, the score about, you know, a drive ago. What they did is they actually used the same little slip screen to the outside. Good job of the cornerback actually playing off his block and taking him down. We do have flags on the play. Referee tonight is Phil Stompoli. Well, it seems that Blue, Blue Springs South is coming out strong, almost as if uh, when Blue Springs came out on Rockers when we first covered them, come out hitting them hard early in the game, putting up points really fast. And then, of course, that one was rain delayed, so we had to come back and finish it. Second down. Penalty is declined. As the ball is moved back to the 13, so it was a loss of four. It'll be second and goal from the 13 now for Blue Spring South. On the option, Cairns. Cuts it up, but runs right into the linebacking core. As Weatherspoon there, also Bruce Ringwood. This is just sort of a quarterback keeper on the outside. Let me take a look at it. See, they run the same crack block that they ran earlier. The, the tackle sets him up and tries to get out and lead the block. But of course, the corner comes back and forces him inside, and, and the linebacker from the backside scrapes tight and makes the play. Bruce Ringwood, 53 total tackles to lead the Wildcats in that category. As far it's been all Blue Springs South on the scoreboard and the total yards. Third down and goal to go, looking to the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown, but there is a flag on the play as the pass was completed to J.D. Lawrence. But let, let, let's see what the laundry's about here. First and one. And it's going to be on the offense. Pass interference on J.D. Lawrence to wave off the six. Right here, we have him just throwing the jump ball on the outside. Now, right here, you're going to see the, he actually, it was before that, he extended his arm and pushed off with the inside hand to get that space and that cushion that he's trying to get for the corner of the end zone. Josh Barge with the coverage for Blue Springs, number 22, and there you see the hand extended. And of course, the referee was sitting right there on top of it to make that call. It'll be a big walk-off. J.D. Lawrence has a touchdown catch of 41 yards in the ball game. Thought he had another, but he's penalized. And now fourth down, ball all the way back to the 27-yard line. And they will 
go for it, setting up the screen. Incomplete to Felix Figueroa. And the ball to go over on downs back to Blue Springs. So the defense will. Coming up big, it was first and goal from the nine, and they were able to stop him. Played well in the red zone. What, what they did is they settled down, started playing the plays. Of course, the first two drives, I think they were more in shock than anything. Right here, you have them running the slip screen underneath, where he actually just sort of blocks it up and actually just takes his eyes off the ball. So the Wildcats get it on downs at their own 27-yard line, down 14 to nothing here. One turnover in the ball game. Justin Whitworth under their center now. Senior quarterback. Gunning the middle, and it's wide of the mark, incomplete. Intended for Jordan Bleese. It'll be second down and 10. Well, it seems like they're, they're still trying to force things to happen. He needs to just settle down, let the ball fly in there. He had the open space, just a little too much harm on that one. Receiver was definitely open there. Second out of 10. Three receivers set. In the backfield is Jeff Troy replacing Tuggle, and he's into the secondary and a first down run. Cut down near the 48 yard line and a pickup of. Some 21 yards. Good play call up the middle. You see him run the extra cut back here. They set the defense one way. He cuts back underneath here. And he's untouched until he gets to the safety. That's one thing you like to see is when you can get the back in the open space so that he only has to make a couple of guys miss as he's getting down the field before he gets to the end zone. And Jeff Troy in replacing an injured Andrew Tuggle. We saw him holding his hand there after that botched option play. Cost him the football and a fumble. So Jeff Troy now in at the tailback slot. Some big shoes to fill here, but the kid that's played a lot of tailback, not playing free safety. Really ask him to play free safety. This play will be blown dead. A very unselfish kid, Kelly Donahoe says. He sacrificed for the team, and he'd love to run the football, and you know he's relishing this role as the running Dead back. ball, delay of game against the offense. Five yard penalty, still one. Be first and 15 now for Blue Springs here. Under a minute to go in your first quarter. Blue Springs South with a touchdown pass of 41 yards to J.D. Lawrence and a four-yard touchdown run by Matt Ferguson. Fake. Whitworth firing, and he has Barge with the catch down to the 46 yard line, taken down by Jared Opp. And he's going to get about seven on the play. It's going to be second down and three. So Josh Barge, another one of their money players, now has to come up big here. Good safe throw and catch as we take a look at his numbers down here. Just run the play action off of a little rollout, finds him in the, in the dead spot of the zone. Good catch on the play up the field. And that is the end of the first quarter. It's been all Blue Springs South looking for the upset of number one and undefeated Blue Springs. 14-0 Jags back with the second quarter. You're watching the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week here on Metro Sports. Well, not too much has gone right thus far for Blue Springs. They trail on the scoreboard 14 to nothing to crosstown rival Blue Springs South. And now Andrew Tuggle has the pads off. The leading rusher and touchdown scorer is getting his shoulder checked out. Doesn't look like he's going to be back in this ball game. Second down and three now for the Wildcats using Jeff Troy now in the backfield. And there goes Troy with the first down inside the 40. Still fighting inside the 35 down to the 33 yard line. And Jeff Troy. Ain't looking too bad right now. Not at all. Good strong run. He ran the counter play behind the guard and tackle, pulling on the backside, opens up the hole inside. Good job of running here. Runs through one and actually keeps rolling. Actually, what helped him out was the offensive line and came to sort of push the pile at the end. 14 yards on the play for Jeff Troy, 185 pounds senior. Passed some time in the backfield last year. 
First and ten for the Cats at the 33-yard line in Blue Springs South Territory, down by two touchdowns. Swing pass, caught by Barge, cuts it up. Barge inside the 30, down to the 27, taking off his feet by Tony Matsky there. But a tough catch on the run nice there by Barge. Match off the outside there. Quarterback had a little fire under the ball when he when he threw out the little swing pass. Uses lead blocker well, cuts back inside. Has to have the linebacker straight from inside out to make the play. Good quick pass for about a seven yard gain. Second down and three now for the Wildcats. Three receivers set here as Joey Vaughn, a wing on the right side now. Now he comes in motion. They give it to the fullback, cutting inside. He's got the first down. Powell driving his way across the 20 to the 18 yard line before he's finally tackled in the secondary by Devin Loomis. A little window dressing on a fullback dive. Send him in motion and just give it to him going into an angle into the backfield. You see the right guard pull around and actually get on top of the linebacker there and finish well up the field. That was Drew Brown finishing a good block up the field. Good drive going here now for the Wildcats. You have it first and 10 from the 19, and this play will be stopped as early movement on the offensive line by the Wildcats here. Just, just a little quick. You see right here, just a little, little movement ahead of time, trying to get a jump on that down block. yards thus far even up and it's 14 nothing Blue Springs South on top of Blue Springs here the first and 15 now for the Wildcats back to the 24s Vaughn goes in motion they fake the pitch trying to set up the screen and Whitworth lost his footing and goes down at the 33 yard line so it'll be a loss of nine and the defensive guys can congratulate themselves, but the quarterback just lost his footing here, it looks like. Well, you know, he looked up and saw the pressure coming on him, tried to plant his feet, they just slipped off from under him. But you know, if you're a defensive lineman, you, you, get, you get happy for any kind of sack. <laughs> <laughs> After he falls, the first one to touch him actually gets that uh, on their stat sheet as far as the sack goes. Well, that'd have been Jason Julian, the sophomore, 230 pounds. This first sack of the year. It'll be second down and 25 yards to go now for the Wildcats. Gunning the middle, and the pass is caught. Tough catch by Phil Mayfield, and he's going to be close to a first down. Talk about giving up your body for the football. A little short on the first down, but what a grab. What a great grab. Just running straight seam up the, up the middle of the field here. Has both safeties waiting on him when he comes down with the catch. Way to go up and give your body for the team. Bill Mayfield, the transfer from Blue Springs South. It's going to be third down and a yard as that play went for 24. Quarterback keeping, and Whitworth has the first down. This will be first and goal now for Blue Springs at the eight-yard line. Nothing fancy there. <laughs> One of those, I'm not really sure if I want to run in there or not. So it falls for the first down. And I guess we see Tuttle on the sideline has ice on his shoulder, so we, we might not see him for the rest of the evening. Officially spotting the football at the seven. First and goal now for Blue Springs. Down 14 to nothing here. Give it to Troy. Looked like he had trouble latching on to the football before he hit the line of scrimmage there. He had a couple on the play. He had a little double clutch in there. It was like he had it outside like the quarterback and him had a bad exchange. We'll take a look at it. Yeah, sort of bobble exchange. That's one thing when you're looking down the field and you want the ball placed and they sort of do it hand to hand instead of doing hand into the body. Wildcats have one turnover in this ball game. Second and goal from the five now. 
Vaughn goes in motion, the short drop, looking for the fade, and Curtis Cooper broke off his route. It'll be third and goal. A few miscues going on tonight. And Whitworth and Cooper talk it over as there was some miscommunication on the play. Cooper mid-season started playing the wideout position and really has come in and done a good job. Three TD catches and limited amount of action. Third and goal now for the Wildcats at the five. Cross sweep. This is Troy going nowhere. Jared Opp took his legs out. It'll be fourth and goal now. Excellent play by the defense. You see both linebackers are going to get up the field before the back can turn uh, north and south up the field. They actually get more penetration, so they keep them going east and west. That's one thing you want to do when you're trying to keep it back from getting into the end zone. Jared Opp leads the team in tackles with 80 coming in. That's his seventh tackle for a loss. You're down by 14 here. They have the ball at the six-yard line. They got a good kicker in Danny Watkins. Still plenty of time in this ball game. And now Blue Springs is going to talk it over as they call timeout. Didn't have enough people on the field to, to run the play regardless if they're going to kick it or not. Get your tickets today for the 2001 Guardians Classic. That'll be November 20th and 21st at the Kemper Arena. Two games on the 20th and two on the 21st featuring such teams as Iowa, Memphis, Alabama, and the Missouri Tigers. For tickets, call 816-931-3330 or go to the website www.guardiansclassic.com. 2001 NABC Guardians Classic, the 20th and 21st of November at the Kemper Arena. Danny Watkins is on the field on fourth and goal now. From outside the five-yard line, he will try a field goal here. He has seven field goals on the season. This one going to be from 23 yards out. The hold by Whitworth. And the kick is good. It is 14-3 now. Blue Springs South still leading here with... 6.37 to go in your first half. Good drive. They put a great drive together. They move the ball all the way down the field. Put some points on the board. Gets that sort of breath and release that we can get close to the end zone. Now they just need to have their defense go out, settle down, get, a, get an interception or a fumble return to get back into the game. Keep in mind, Blue Springs was down 10-6 last year in this Blue Springs Classic, and they came back to win 20 to 10. They're down 14 to 3 here. It's just over six and a half to play in your second quarter. Yeah, as we see a lost Marcus Spears on the sideline. He is here. I see him, yes. Confused and lost, but he's here. <laughs> Check in with Marcus a little later. Josh Barge has it teed up. Blue Springs to kick it away. Ferguson and Figueroa deep back to the Jags. This will be Tony Matsky from the 18. Up to the 25 and no more. Good coverage from the special teams by Matt Webb. The Jags will get it right there. Leading by 11 here. Good job of Maskey delivering the blow. So he was coming up the field, so he had a guy going full steam, just dipped his shoulder and sort of ran through him as he fell to the ground. One set back, it'll be Jared Opp. Four receivers set for Blue Spring South on first and 10. This is Opp. And he ran into a brick wall. Robert Taylor, number 71, there to shut that play down. Defense stays tight, stays at home, makes a good play on the fullback. Just a straight dive play up the middle. Yeah. 
yard gain in the play. Second down and nine. Robert Taylor, a young man that didn't know how he would develop. He was on the C team as a freshman. Right, his junior year, he didn't even start, so you're on that C team. Youngsters watching at home, don't give up. Robert Taylor now starts and is a very effective performer. As the pass down the field, in and out of the hands of Andy Strope, incomplete. Quarterback's nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Roll out, throw it softly over the corner, drops it in where you want it to be, and it's a drop ball. You know, there's no one behind him, so if he catches the ball on the run, takes off, he's going straight to the end zone. But then some people say those are the most difficult ones to catch because they're nice and soft coming into you. You know once you catch it, there's nobody waiting. So you get excited, and then you just sort of forget to catch the ball and run, and run it in for the end zone. Third down and nine for the Jags out of the shotgun. Karen's on the roll. Firing the near sideline. Well overthrown, looking for Strope again. Curtis Cooper had the coverage, and it's funny time now for Blue Springs South. Good series for Blue Springs. They settle down, play strong, they have the rollout. And what Blue Springs South is doing is they're doing a good job of moving their quarterback. They're keeping him out of the center because they know they have good team speed on the other side of the ball. And he really throws a tight spiral on the run. Jonathan has a great arm. A very athletic family as he gets ready to punt here. His brother Troy is a baseball player at the University of New Mexico. His sister Carrie was a three sport athlete, graduate of 96 at Blue Springs South. Gets the punt away. Curtis Cooper backing and muffs it. Now picks it up at the 34. Makes a man miss. Cooper trying to get to the corner and taken down near the 40 yard line. Andy Stroke there. Brian Lothgreen as well. Blue Springs will get it back down 14 to 3 here, but have really stemmed the tide in this ball game. And speaking of stemming the tide, who's here? Marcus Spears is here. Oh, there he is. I would have been here earlier, but I had to park on I-70 and walk. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you can't find a parking spot. I wandered around here for about 20 minutes trying to get a spot. Then the guy don't try to make me buy a ticket to get in this joint, man. <laughs> I'm upset. I gotta go smoke a cigarette. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, hey man, this is hey, this is nice. This is a real nice crowd. I'm gonna put this mic down and get in the stands and watch this game myself. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Good luck finding a seat. Hand it off to Jeff Troy, and he is gonna be shut down for maybe one. Tony Matsky, good one-on-one -on -one tackle, number 34 for Blue Springs South. What Tony Matsky did was good. He stayed tight to the to the uh, guard and tackle as they pulled, collapsed the end, let the ball bounce right back to him, and stayed at home, and then made the play. Actually, lose about a half yard here. You see him scrape to the outside there, stay at home. The ball bounces right out to him. The top tacklers is Tony Matsky. Nearly 65 tackles. Second down and long for Blue Springs. Swing pass to Jeff Troy. Beats Brett Shamlin. Takes it to the 50 and then taken down there. Good move in the open field to get by the safety man. That's nice third down and short here. Jeff Troy. What I like about it here, he actually throws his hands up. He says he wants it one-on-one, -on -one, makes you miss. That's what you like to have is your back in space, one on one, make the guy miss and get positive yards. Sean Watzlawick, defensive end, backtracking, made the tackle. It's going to be third down and a yard here. And we have timeout on the field taken by the Wildcats. 4-12 to go in your second quarter, and Greg Oder and the Jaguars trying to pull the upset here. The official word on the injury on Andrew Tuggle is a dislocated shoulder. So Andrew Tuggle is done for the night, and here's the play that cost the Wildcat back here. Goes reach out for the ball and probably gets it. Gets hit on the inside shoulder, and you can see it go sort of limp, and then he falls down on it. That's one thing when you have to stretch out to try to get pick up a fumble, you left your shoulder and everything vulnerable to take those kind of hits. Junior running back, 21 touchdowns, nearly 1,500 yards. And Jeff Troy now subbing for him. 
Kelly Donahoe coming off. Also coach of Raytown South before coming to Blue Springs. And a great job here. So it'll be third down and one now near the midfield stripe for the purple and gold of Blue Springs. Down by 11 here. Toss sweep to Troy. Vaughn, the fullback, can't get the block on Matsky, and he's taken down. There's a flag on the play as well. It looks like a face mask possibly here. We'll wait and see. It'll be on Blue Springs South. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Mansky is a one-man wrecking crew. Right now, he's making plays all over the field. Really took on the fullback well that time. Joey Vaughn couldn't get rid of him. Five-yard face mask on a defense, five yards from the end of the run. That'll be a first down. We'll take a look at it. Just a straight pitch out to the left. See Mansky reach out. Well, it's close. That's close, you know. Anytime you grab around the neck or anything else. Looks like he had the shoulder pads, Will. He does bring him down by the shoulder pads, but they're saying the initial touch could have been on the face mask. Mm. First and 10 from the 45. Play fake. Setting up the wide, the wide receiver screen to Josh Barge. Inside the 30, down to the 29. And a first down pickup going 16 yards. Coming Josh back, Barge. Coming back to the play they ran earlier where he fell down. You see the guys are breaking for him. Just a little slip screen underneath. They release everybody, guards and tackles underneath to make a, a convoy to try to escort him down the field. Jared Opp made the tackle. Good night going for Josh Barge. First and 10 for the Cats at the 30 now. Vaughn in motion, swing pass. That is a backwards pass. The ball is live. The Jaguars are coming over it. And let's see, let's see what the officials are gonna call. They definitely threw it behind the line. First down, Blue Springs South. Miscue on the play. The wide pitch, which is, you know, anytime you throw the ball laterally, you have to make sure that you get deep enough. He throws the ball clearly behind him. Barge couldn't get it. And good job of the defense recognizing and making the play on the ball. Nice play by Brett Shamblin. Two turnovers now for the Wildcats as they trail 14 to three. Karen's in the offense back out. And now early movement will blow this play dead. Check in now with Marcus Spears. Man, no sooner than I get here, my guys found me. Y'all remember this hat that well, remember that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you look good in that hat. <laughs> now, these guys are a little bit behind, but they say they're coming back. Now, they're going to push me off these stands in a minute. Hold on. We're going to stand here for a little while and see what's going on. I think it was a bad call, but we're going to see. These guys are pumped. I think they're going to come back. Back to you guys. Now a timeout taken by Jonathan Cairns. With 3.10 to go in the second quarter. He's thrown a touchdown pass tonight. Matt Ferguson has a rushing touchdown. Danny Watkins, a 23-yard field goal. All the scoring in the ball game thus far. Where was the sunglasses? Remember he had those big sunglasses yeah, on when he was wearing the hat? I guess they forgot him tonight. Uh -huh. Not that bright here. In between then, we had the cold spell and then a little more heat. So, gorgeous night tonight here in Blue Springs. Temperatures right now in the 50s. And Kelly Donahoe's team is down by 11. Number one undefeated team in the Metro Sports Bowl. Made two costly turnovers. And the Jags have just looked sharp here in the first half. You got to tip your cap to them. Very sharp. Came out. Throwing the ball well, running the ball well, making plays. This is district action here, Will. No matter what you did all season long, it matters what you do in these three district ball games. The winner goes to the state playoffs, and the winner will take on the district 14 champion. The loser 
your season is over. First and five after the encroachment penalty on the Wildcats. Give it to Matsky right in the line, breaking tackles and close to a first down as he goes for four yards. Hard running by Tony Matsky for Blue Springs South. Well, what they're doing good is they're spreading the defense out. You see inside, they want to get five to six in the box so that you can actually just run up the middle. And right there, he carries three, four, five, six defenders as he's moving up the field. And also, I saw a guy on the bottom there that had a little uh, wide out that was actually uncovered. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see sooner or later he just takes the snap and throw it straight out there and see how many yards they can get on the edge. Second down and a couple now for the Jaguars. They have it, their own 43, and now another encroachment penalty is coming up. Possibly here, we'll wait and see and hear from Phil Stompoli, but there was movement on both sides here. And it's defensive encroachment. That's an automatic first down with a five-yard walk-off. You have a dead ball, encroachment on the defense, five-yard penalty. The result is a first down. We have a look at it here. And Joe Bach, the defensive end, number 99, into the neutral zone early. So first and 10 for the Jags. They have it at their own 48-yard line. Approaching two minutes to play in the first half. 14-3. Jaguars, quick slant. This is Matt Ferguson. Breaking tackles, has the first down, down near the 37-yard line. And a pickup of 15. Some tough yards after the catch by Matt Ferguson there. Quarterback does a great job of getting the ball out of his hands. One step, he throws it, needles it in there, and then good Good drive by the by the, the tailback to actually keep pulling up the field. Matt Shirt. Ferguson with a touchdown run, and I have it a big ball game. Showed sheer determination to get up the field. First and ten from the 37 out of the shotgun. The option. Karen's keeping it and going down. Bruce Ringwood. Maybe loss of one on the play. That's a play you try to go and get big little. You want to get the big positive yards. If not, it still doesn't matter because you got a chance to run the defense a little bit, to get them to run and get them tired. So that the next time you come through it, one guy might not it might make the difference. If he doesn't run, that opens the scene for the quarterback to take the ball up the field. Second down at 11, approaching a minute to go in the second quarter here. Number 10, Blue Springs South, leading number one, Blue Springs. A little gadgetry as Ferguson throwing a pass incomplete, looking for Andy Stroke. And it's going to be third down and long. Chris Miller back in coverage for the Wildcats. Right now, we're calling it the year of the trick plays. <laughs> if, every, if anyone that's designed one, they're running it. Seems like <laughs> <laughs> every time you turn the TV on, there's somebody running the double pitch or reverse pass or something of that nature. Nebraska, Oklahoma ball game. <laughs> exactly. How about you watch somebody else do it, then you run it back on them. <laughs> oh, yeah. That guy's going to be a hero the rest of his life. People will never forget that play. Third and a long 10. Backwards pass, and it's going to be... Hitting the ground and be an incompletion. I think that was behind it there. I blew the play dead. It looked like it was a lateral. That's what I was thinking, but it's an incomplete to Andy Stroke. Take another look here. Having some wild angles on these passes here. Definitely. That is a lateral. And I and guess they say his knee was down there and he yeah. is dead right there. So move the ball back to the 41. But that definitely was a lateral, but his knee was on the ground. And what they were setting up there was a double pass where he was going to pass it out to him and he was going to throw it down the field. He had two blockers in front of him, giving the option to either run the ball or throw the ball. 47.6 seconds to go in your first half. Wildcats a little stunned here. It's Justin Whitworth hoping to get the football back here.
Hunting unit out for Blue Springs South here on fourth and 14. Bach is running now. And Jonathan Cairns is taking his own sweet time getting back to accept the snap. Punt his football away. Yeah. And the clock is running because he caught the ball inbounds and then when his knee hit the ground he was inbounds so technically the clock must run. And there's the delay of game flag pitch from the referee's back pocket. Blue screen south trying to get a little more room to punt as well as run the clock down as much as possible so. Dead ball. Delay of game against the offense. Five yard penalty, repeat fourth down. We need two seconds on the clock. Twenty two seconds. Expected to be set on the clock and now is. Cairns will. Put away here. D back is Curtis Cooper inside the 15 yard line. Cooper takes it on the run. And he's pushed out of play near the 20 yard line. 13.7 seconds to go in the first half. Wildcats will get it. But they're down by 11 here. This situation, the like draws and screens, those kind of things to open up the field, try to get their playmakers in space. But you got to know Blue Springs South wants to shorten this ball game as much as they can. They have the lead here. In mind they led 10 6 last year. Blue Springs South did. Of course, succumbing to Blue Springs 20 to 10. Talked to Greg Oder about that. He said we had one first down in the second half. Hard to win a ball game when you're not moving the football. This is the fullback Joey Vaughn, and he's going nowhere. And the Jags are fired up. Jared Opp, number 47, with the defensive stop. And that play will be the final play of the first half. And an upset brewing here at PV Stadium right now as number 10, Blue Springs South, leading Blue Springs 14 to 3. Coming up. Hyvee at the half. You're watching the Hyvee High School Game of the Week on Metro Sports. Patrick Bledsoe. Shocker thus far here at PV Bledsoe. Stadium. Blue Springs South Grant leading Hill, Blue Springs 14 to 3. Kevin White, Will Excellent Shields, and Marcus Katie Spears. And Jaguars Jennifer ruling this town right now, Will. They made Judy the big plays. Connor. Their quarterback, Jonathan Cairns, has had a good Ashley first Schultz. half. And the defense has been stout as well. They've created two turnovers. Very good first half for the Jaguars. They've played strong on offense, strong on defense. And Carrington has, has shown what he what he's done, especially with the 1,000 yards he's added on to it so far. And the rushing yards have made even better. 14-3 at halftime. And we'll have more halftime here. Ivy High School Game of the Week continues here on Metro Sports. Fourteen three at halftime. Blue Springs South leading number one Blue Springs. And time now to check the High V first half statistics here. Well, take a look at the stats. It's sort of one sided here. The Jaguars have eight to four first downs. Did a great job in the first half, starting off strong. Total yards the difference, but right now turnovers. Turnovers has made a big difference in the, in the, in the game so far. And, and right now they're playing very strong. And we expect them to sort of switch it up in the second half, get to a ground game, and sort of grind it out. 14-3, Blue Springs South leading Blue Springs in the big city rivalry game. And the seniors in the respective bands being introduced here. A community effort tonight here in Blue Springs. More halftime after this. Oh. 
14 to 3 Blue Springs South leading at Blue Springs and time now to check our first half highlights brought to you by High V. Well we'll start off with the Jaguars on the front side here slant round inside put the ball on the string and he goes into the end zone. J.D. Lawrence with a touchdown catch of 41 yards. 7-0 Jags. And then, of course, we wouldn't have anything without Harrington and his running ability. Cuts and weaves all the way through. Down to the one. And we'll set up Matt Ferguson with a touchdown run of five yards. Then we go to the other side, and you see... The defense playing stout. Right here we see the injury that causes Tuggle to end up leaving the game. Dislocated shoulder. And then they give the ball to Troy. Bobs and Reed cuts and sweeps all the way through down to the 40. Then they have the, the counter. Cuts through, plays good coming in off the bench. Well, some say they cold, but he came in and played well. Expect big things in the second half. 14-3. Blue Springs South Lady Blue Springs. More of our halftime after this. At half, the Jaguars trying to pull the upset over Blue Springs. 14 to 3 is your score as we check in with Marcus Spears. Go ahead and get your one. <laughs> oh, you're in line. You're out of line. Hey, man, look at this. You got chili, peppers, corn dog. They're trying to do it up. I'm telling you, man, I'm bringing out the best in these people, man. I'm telling you. Oh, they got corn dogs. I love corn dogs. But what about the nachos? Oh, what about the nachos? Yeah. They're good. They're but, good. but. With the chili and everything, they ain't got no meat. Ruskin had the meat in the nachos, man. Ruskin had the meat. I get these a nine and a half. I give an extra tenth for the corn dog, so they get nine and three tenths of a point. <laughs> 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 but the corn dog is good, though, man. Back to you guys. Make sure you give me a couple of those for later. <laughs> well, that does look good. 14 3 at the half. Third quarter action coming up next here on our Hyvee High School Game of the Week here on Metro Sports. Ready for third quarter action here at PV Stadium at Blue Springs High School. Blue Springs down by 11. It's Greg Oder's team. Couple of first half touchdowns, a pass to J.D. Lawrence and a touchdown run by Matt Ferguson. They're scoring for Kelly Donahoe, a 23-yard field goal by Danny Watkins. And the number one team on the ropes here, Will. What do they have to do here in the second half? Well, in the second half, all you got to really do is realize in the third quarter, they need to hold them to zero points and score at least one touchdown, and then they're back in the hunt. It's not that complicated. It's not that hard. Just don't try to overdo it. If you try to overdo it, that's when you usually make those costly mistakes of fumbles, turnovers, interceptions, trying to go for the big play all at once. Wildcats ready to go. They'll receive the second half kickoff. Curtis Cooper juggles it, lost it, picks it back up at the five. Breaks a tackle. Curtis Cooper. The kicker coming over. Coleman makes the tackle. Boy, that play looked doomed at the start, but Curtis Cooper, his speed and great moves, makes a big play. What he did was good is that he actually bobbled the ball, hit the ground, Actually took his time to pick the ball up first and then find a place to run. Breaks a tackle and then breaks into the open field. You know, one time they do that is actually when they fumble the, the punt or actually the kickoff return, it gives spacing and it gives them a chance to break the, uh, the coverage team down a little bit and creates those seams and holes for him to get into. 43-yard return by Cooper. First and 10 for the Wildcats at the 48 and their own. Back to pass. Whitworth looking for Cooper down the sidelines. Incomplete. Coverage by Felix Figueroa. It'll be second down and 10. Trying to get down the field fast and trying to get straight into the end zone from the first play. Straight drop back. Have a little pressure coming from the backside. Little strong. Oh. 
Second down and 10 now for the Cats. In the backfield is Andrew Tuggle. There's a shot. They give it to Tuggle. Little shake and bake across the 50 to the 48 of Blue Springs South. So thought Tuggle was done for the night, but he's put the pads back on and back in there. Well, you know, ice does miracles. You know, they say <laughs> water helps everything. You get injured, they say put a little ice on it, you'd be all right in about 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> Tuggle is a junior. It's win or go home time, so Tuggle decided to grin and bear it. Third and six now. Quarterback draw and lost the football. It's on the ground. Blue Spring South says they have it. They'll wait for the men in stripes. Still scrumming for it. Jags football, three turnovers now for the Cats. Josh Taylor gets the loose pigskin. Quarterback careless with the ball. Actually, he drops back, it's a quarterback draw. The outside linebacker comes in and knocks it out. The playmaker knocks it out from behind. Matsky knocked it out there. And Blue Spring South pounces on the ball. Tony Matsky, a big play night for him, and Josh Taylor covered it up for the Jags. As they get it now at the 46 and their own, Jonathan Cairns out of the shotgun. Four receivers deployed here. And flags on the play here. Procedure on Blue Spring South. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty is still first down. First and 15 back to the 41 as you look at the penalty yardage in this ball game. Pretty even at this point. 14 to three Greg Oder and the Jaguars leading here. Drop under pressure and going to be sacked. Troy Pike, number seven, with the sack for the Wildcats. Brought an all dog. They brought both outside linebackers and the inside linebackers and just collapsed the pocket. You see, everybody's playing their keys. Outside linebackers coming. Blitz is saying they're going to get there before he gets a chance to get the ball off to the hot read outside to one of the wide receivers. back to the 38 yard line so it'll be second down and 20 now quick pass on the slant nearly intercepted good coverage by Curtis Cooper in the secondary as the pass was intended for Andy Stroke nice break on the ball read, read the quarterback where he was going with the ball and broke underneath A nice break on the ball. Close to getting the interception and getting the offense back in the field. Third down and long here. Third and 20. Passing night for Jonathan Cairns. Sets up. Looking deep. Looking for stroke. Overthrown. Incomplete. Fourth down. Time now for the Jaguars. Well, they're going to a little max protection there. They're, they're leaving most of their wide receivers in, only taking two guys in routes to make sure the quarterback has enough time to try to read which guy is going to come open. Jonathan to punt it away now. On fourth and 20, deep back, Curtis Cooper waiting near the 25. This one gets by him inside the five. Can they touch it before it goes in the end zone? Yes, they down it inside the one. Great special teams work by the Jaguars as Watzlawick running down there and touching it inside the one. That was a case of the ball beat the referee down the field and he didn't have a chance to actually look at it from a good angle. We'll see right here, the ball rolls all the way down here. We're trying to see how close it's gonna get. 
You see right here, he rides in, he hides the ball from behind, but his body is actually on the line also. So from that angle, we can't tell, but I know one thing, it was close. <laughs> yeah, it was. Felix Figueroa got down there and saved it. And the Wildcats will start from the one. 99 yards from Pater here, down 14 to three. Tuggle remains in the backfield with Vaughn. Play fake, Whitworth on the roll, finding his fullback out of the backfield. And Vaughn up to the 10, near the 11. Where he's cracked down by three Jaguars there. Good play from, from being in your end zone. Gutsy play from your end zone. Close to a first down. And it is a first down. Play action roll out. Hide your fullback, let him run a little out route. Give the offense a little space, a little room to operate. Jared Opp, Felix Figueroa, and Devin Loomis triple team him down, but it is a first down for the Wildcats here. Scrimmaging at their own 11. Josh Barge going in motion. Quick pass in the flat area. Curtis Cooper cuts it up. And Cooper across the 15 to near the 18 or 19 yard line. They're running tight pass routes right close to the line. Quick screen. Nice catch. Up the field right there is a good job by the offensive line of keeping their hands down. That's one thing that's sort of iffy there. If you get a little penetration and the guy gets his hands up, that's when you can tip it up and have those costly interceptions and turnovers. Second and short. So second and one from just outside the 20 yard line. Vaughn in motion, toss sweep to Tuggle. And it takes a hard crack, breaks that tackle, acquires the first down as he's run out of bounds at the 23-yard line. So Tuggle showing he can take some punishment. And it's Josh Taylor there to escort him out. Good job of cutting the defense out there. They actually gave him a corner there for a hot second. Goes out here, they give him the corner there with the crack back block. Makes one miss for the first down. Gain of nearly five on the play for Andrew Tuggle. First and ten Wildcats. Play fake Whitworth being chased by Watts Lewick. Gets away, firing. This is going to come up short, but coming back for the football is Matt Jones and makes the big catch for the Wildcats. The Hail Mary lob works over the top of the defender. Defender gets lost looking at the ball in the lights and it falls into the hand of the wide receiver. 46 yards with a big catch by Matt Jones. Now this is a player he tried to run earlier. Now this time he eludes the, the pressure somewhat so he could turn his shoulders up the field and actually see the deep route and get the ball out. Tough throw on the run. Wildcats have it. First and 10 from the 29 in Blue Spring South Territory here. Blitz coming from behind. Whitworth firing through the hands of Barge. Incomplete. A rare drop for the All-State wideout. Rolling out, but the pressure from the backside is coming fast. Takes a hit as he throws. See the roll out and you see the pressure coming to the field. Takes a nice little hit from the backside. Second down and 10 now for the Wildcats here. Down by 11, under eight to play in your third quarter. Whitworth, plenty of time. Finding Barge cutting across. Makes a couple of guys miss. And turns it up for a gain of about seven on the play. And that's amazing that they actually get that screen play off so deep because the offensive linemen actually block and release. So I'm surprised that half of them aren't up the field. They're up the field at least eight to nine yards because he has to hold the screen. But of course, I think some of the referees are watching. You see there all the linemen releasing and he has to take an extra long drop before he actually gets the ball off. Third down and three now for Blue Springs. Ball 
at the 23 in Jaguar territory here. Tuggle up the middle, has the first down as he's inside the 20 to near the 17 yard line. Tighten down the formation. Run the fullback in motion, run a little counter backside, fullback seals the backside off. Good surge up the field for the first down. See the counter play inside as it develops. Good job of staying behind his blocker. Tackled by Jason Julian. That's another set of downs. First and 10 now for the Wildcats. Keep in mind they started this drive at their own one yard line. Tuggle again. And getting good yardage on first and 10 there. As Tuggle will not showing any ill effects with the shoulder. Seems to be running pretty hard. Running pretty hard. Seems a little higher than normal, but running pretty hard. You see him right here, just a straight dive up the middle. Second down and five now. Tuggle right up the middle, just power football, and it's going to be first and goal for the Cats as he's down near the four-yard line, Andrew Tuggle. Tighten down the hatches, pull everybody in tight in a bunch position to the left, the three wide receivers sitting over there. He just run the fullback up there, he runs behind the fullback, the lead blocker, takes the, the linebacker out of the hole, spins for the extra yards. Brandon Case, a nice block to spring Andrew Tuggle. First and goal, spotted at the five yard line. Tuggle right up the middle again. This time, Jags flinging to the turf. Josh Taylor there to polish him off. It'll be second and goal now. Good surge by the defense there. six to play here in your third quarter and Wildcats trying to draw within four here touchdown an extra point 14 to 10 play fake by Whitworth now we'll tuck and run touchdown Wildcats Justin Whitworth play action fake Quarterback roll keeper just runs it here for the touchdown. Good play calls, good patience, 99 yard drive. Capped off by the bootleg. Untouched. Three yard touchdown run by. The two point conversion pass, and it is incomplete. Looking for Josh Barge. And the two point conversion fails here. And as you take a look at Whitworth scoring the six pointer there. Space and room where they could run the actual deep wrap. Play action right there. Gave the, the offense a little breathing room. And the deep ball thrown off his back foot. Good reception. Matt Jones with the catch there. And they set up the screen pass inside. He did a good job of mixing it up on this drive. He had the counter inside for the positive yards inside. 
straight ahead dive power football. Once they got inside the 20, then they run the play fake off of it. Quarterback keeper puts it in the end zone. So it's now 14 to nine as swing kickoff is rushed out near the 30 yard line by the Jaguars. Good drive for Justin Whitworth as he got the touchdown run of three yards. Second rushing touchdown of the season for the senior quarterback. And now the junior quarterback, Jonathan Cairns. Coming out. Let's see what the Jaguars can do here. They lead by five here. Under five to play in the third quarter. Matsky is the lone setback. They fake it to him, pitch it out to Ferguson, cutting it up. And he's taken down. First contact by Robert Taylor. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Good pursuit by the defense. Going to play a little option play out here. Quick pitch. Try to give him some space. Defense pursues well, makes the tackle. Second and 10 from the 30 yard line now. Short drop, looking for the slant, incomplete. Bruce Ringwood had the coverage there on Matt Ferguson. He got the close did line there. Did, Ringwood did a good job of jamming him at the line. It disrupt his pass route. As he's trying to get off the ball, Ringwood actually just sort of punched him in, in the chest so that he couldn't get, he couldn't release from the line. Big third down now for Blue Springs South. Third and 10 from their own 30. The Wildcats fans up on their feet. All their purple and gold glory making all kinds of noise here. Out of the shotgun. Karen's firing. Wide open receiver and goes down shy of the first down. Felix Figueroa got seven, then touched his knee down as he slipped. And it's going to be fourth and a couple now for the Jags. One of those, I can't believe it's butter. Catches it, slips down. He's wide open though, Will. There's nobody there. He would have got the first down easily. Cooper was coming up, but like he might have. Well, he had plenty of space. Wide open in the flat, just loses his foot and trying to cut up the field. So fourth down and three. Jonathan Cairns will punt it away here to Curtis Cooper. Jags leading by a margin of five as they punt away from Cooper. This one will trickle down to the 21 yard line. As we check in with Marcus Spears now. Now we got Blue Springs North, Blue Springs South. We got the Bobcats against the Jaguars. Bobcats? <laughs> Bo Wildcats? Wildcat. Yeah, Wildcat. There you go. Now, wouldn't you guys want to see a fight between the two cats? <laughs> Y'all gonna mix it up, man. Mix it up. Who got, come on. Give it to him. <laughs> Stick it. Give it to him. Hold on now. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. All right. Wait, go, go. 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 Go ahead. Get him. Get him. Get him. <laughs> Get him. Oh, boy. Get him. Fans really enjoying that. First and ten. Tuggle. Nice cut back. And Andrew. And a gain of about six up to the 27 yard line. Gonna get somebody hurt there, Marcus. <laughs> One week he's wrestling the Ruskin Eagle. Yeah. Now he's causing the two mascots to go at it themselves. They come back with a counter play inside. Good cut by Tuggle. Second down and four now for the Wildcats here. Tuggle trying to go to the outside and no room to run that time as Jason Julian there to shut the play down. It'll be third down. And it's called about five yards to go now. Well, Blue Springs tightened down inside. They were trying to just use power football, trying to get back into the game. Blue Springs south. Sandwiched everybody inside, and he tried to bounce out late. 
Good job by the corner coming in and making the play on the end. Approaching two minutes to go in your third quarter. Blue Springs trailing 14 to nine. Play action, Whitworth getting away from Opp, but no, he didn't. Jared Opp got his legs and gets the sack. Now on that play, they switched the blitz line from the first time the blitz line was from behind the quarterback. This time they brought the blitz right into his face. So as soon as he turned around, they had the pressure on him. And good play, good play of sliding and actually get the shoestring tackle. Jared Opp, second sack of the year. He's got the 4-6 speed, leading tackler. With a lot of touchdowns for this team as well. A valuable commodity is Jared Opp. Honorable mention all conference last year. That'll be different this year. He'll probably be a first or second teamer in the suburban Big Eight. Let this one hit. Goes sideways and then covered up by the Wildcats near the midfield stripe. Next week, it's playoff action in Missouri and Kansas. And this Friday night, we'll have the Kansas 6A Substate ball game at 7 p.m. Then on Friday, the Missouri sectional ball game played on Wednesday airs on Friday at 10:30 p.m. That'll be Oak Park at Rockers. First and ten for the Blue Spring South Jaguars. Little quarterback keeper. And the ball came out there a little bit at the end of the play. As he's able to get four yards in the play. The ball is bouncing in the right direction so far. Quarterback sneak inside. The ball gets knocked out from behind. Man. Jags cover it up, gain five of the play, second down and five now. On the option, Cairns keeps and goes for four on the play. Mention Will, he's the leading rusher of this team coming in and handles that option pretty well. Plays the option very well, makes good decisions. One, one thing he does, he fakes it at the middle, makes a decision if he's going to take the ball and gets up the field. It's going to be third down and a couple now for Blue Springs South. We'll let the third quarter clock wind out, but the number one and undefeated Wildcats of Blue Springs have crept a little closer. It's now 14 to 9. The final 12 minutes coming up next on our High V High School Game of the Week here on Metro Sports. It scares you a little bit is, is from both teams, you, you both had great years and to think that it could end like that. And the frustrating thing is there's other districts that there's gonna be teams winning that aren't nearly the teams that Blue Springs or Blue Springs South are. And that's a little bit frustrating, but at the same time, you, you live with that constant fear of knowing that you could get knocked out. And, and for our kids who have had such a tremendous season, um, you know, we just can't let it happen, you know, and, and our kids have been excited since Friday night for this. And uh, they, the last thing in the world they're going to let happen to them is get knocked out. That's their attitude, and uh, that's our attitude. But I tell you, the South group is a, a, a tough group. They're well coached, and uh, they've got enough weapons to beat us if we don't play a great football game. Kelly Donahoe, as we begin play in the fourth quarter, his team down by five, but a big third down and two. The pass was incomplete to Felix Figueroa, so Jonathan Cairns will punt it away here. Curtis Cooper waiting inside his 10. It's pretty simple, folks. You win the night, you're in the state playoffs, you lose, your season ends. All or nothing time, win or go home time. And a very good punt by Jonathan Cairns as that ball goes out inside the 10 yard line. That's his second inside the 20 yard line. Keep in mind he dropped one at the one yard line. So quarterback uh, doing it all tonight, Jonathan Cairns. Very good job. That sets the tone for the fourth quarter. You want to try to keep him there, make them punt, and that gives you even better field position. But of course, keep in mind, last time the Jaguars or the Wildcats were backed up, they drove it 99 yards here. Down by five, just underway in the final quarter here for 
Blue Springs, PV Stadium. District 13 title on the line. Tuggle caught in the backfield. Tony Matsky cut in there and got a piece of it. Number 34. Matsky is everywhere. What they're doing is they're bringing both linebackers from the outside corners and they're closing the playoff. He's meeting them in the backfield when he gets the ball because they don't have enough blockers on the outside to protect the edges. Brett Shamblin, the strong safety, was there as well. A loss of two on the play. Second down and 12. Big game going for Tony Matsky, the senior. Second down and long now for the Wildcats. On the roll. Whitworth firing. Phil Mayfield wide open and slides out of bounds near the 30-yard line. It is a first down catch. His second catch of the ball game. Phil Mayfield. Good job of giving the quarterback time. They had a little rollout. They kept the front side uh, fullback in to give him some extra time. Two-man route. Good ball, good catch. See a lot of guys slipping tonight, Will. Well, Went down it, on the field earlier. What was it like? Well, it seemed like in the middle of the field, it seemed more slippy than the outside edges. As far as when they were warming up, it seemed like they slipped there more. But, you know, as the temperature drops, maybe there's a little more condensation that drops on the ground also. From the 29, first and 10, Tuggle and Vaughn in an eye. On the option, Whitworth keeping. Caught from behind, though. As a nice top by Jason Julian. Some deft moves there, but very, almost lost the football when you're. Very in that nice move. moves there. The little pump fake here. Now, what I thought I was going to see there is when he got grabbed from behind, the actual pitch from there. You know, that's some of uh, the old OU type stuff. <laughs> The guy, the sophomore, Jason Julian. Nice stop there. Good hustle from the back side. Gain of three on the play. Second down and seven now. Whitworth rolling to his right, firing downfield, looking for Barge. He makes the go. Oh, he dropped it. Oh, my goodness. He was juggling that for about three seconds and couldn't latch on. Incomplete. One of those in, out, in, and then out again. Had a chance. Quarterback had to underthrow it a little bit so the receiver could come back. Didn't have enough time to get all the way out there. Bug it. Oh, got it. Took his eye off of it and then dropped it. You, know, you always like the quarterback's profile after you throw it. Like, oh, this is a good ball, and you leave their hand out there. A tough catch for Bards. Couldn't haul it in. Now a big third and seven for the Wildcats. Toss it out to Tuggle, cutting it back. Tuggle is going to be shy of the first down as he stopped at the 39 yard line. They needed to get to about the 39 and a half. Depends on the spot here. The spot looks like it's good. Good for spot. First down. Okay, it is. <laughs> They gave him the slide mark with it, you know, so like he drug and then he sort of slid for the extra yard. Interesting call here, third and seven, running it with Andrew Tuggle. Of course, he's been great all year. Well, they finally got a chance to get the defense to split and open up. They threw a couple of passes, so the defense was loosening up a little bit, trying to play a little more coverage. Third and seven, you would think he was going to go down, down deep with the ball. Run the 40, first and 10, play fake, Whitworth. Finding his fullback, Vaughn, with the catch. And it's a gain of five up to the 45-yard line. He was about, like, two feet away from when he threw that, didn't That's he? That's a Brett Farver move, you know. <laughs> you see Brett Farver run out there, and he's in the last second. The guy's getting ready to help him. He just sort of shovels it forward. Rolls out here to the right. shaking hands here, oh, it looked like. Got they... trouble, and then just sort of pushes it back off inside. Good heads-up play by the fullback to be ready for the ball. Second down and five now for Blue Springs trailing by five here. Under nine to play in your ball game. Winner wins the District 13 and will take on the District 14 champion next week in the Missouri sectionals. Now Whitworth comes out of center and calls timeout. First time out of the second half for Kelly Donahoe and the Wildcats. 
8.32 to play in your final quarter. High school roundup now on Wednesdays. Chad Harberts, Brad Porter, Angie Samuelson, Mick Schaefer, Lacey Woolard, a special Wednesday edition, 9.30s on Metro Sports. Ten thousand plus here tonight. Big night for the city of Blue Springs. A big night. They raise money through the Community Services League, collecting cans, collecting money, help out the needy in the community. It's a community in the spotlight tonight. The City of Cooperation, as it's called, forty thousand Blue Springs. This is their night. Football game, just a, a huge highlight, but. Of unity in this community, and they're proud of both these football programs, and they've seen a great football game to this point. Second down and five after the Blue Springs timeout for the Wildcats at their own 45. Toss it out to Tuggle. They fake the reverse. Tuggle turning the corner has the first down into Jaguar territory near the 41. Devin Loomis with the stop, and Tuggle. Getting those legs working. Getting the legs working. Getting a little pitch outside. Faking the reverse. Giving the appearance of the reverse is coming. Slows the backer down and the corner. Sort of helps him get to the edge. He gets that good first down. You see his first half rushing yards compared to the second half rushing. They got him involved in the game. Of course, you know, in the first half, he did go out with that injury. So second half, they're sort of riding the guy that got him here dislocated shoulder don't tell me his shoulder is not sore and he's out there playing back to pass Winworth under pressure gets away Winworth inside the 30 cutting back slips goes down at the 27 yard line and it's another first down as the quarterback just taking off Jeff Williams with a defensive stop for the Jags felt the pressure of the ball the people coming in from inside and outside Felt the pocket collapsing, uses his feet, good job, makes, makes a good positive decision, gets up the field, wasn't sure if he wanted to go inside or outside, felt defenders all over. Just get on the ground, quarterback. We don't want to get you hurt. Play going for 14 yards. And the Wildcats in the midst of another long drive here. Up the middle with Tuggle. Caught from behind. Miles will go for about three on the play. Matsky got him from behind. Also, Jeff Williams involved. Right now, they're doing a good job of mixing up the plays. They're running inside. They're running outside. They're using the pass a little bit. Sort of mixing and sprinkling in a little everything, keeping the defense on his heel so you can't, they can't beat on where they want to blitz him because then they'll roll him out to the right or roll him out to the left. Or straight back drop, you know, and that, that gives you it gives you a lot of different things to work with once the defense has started guessing of where he's going to go with the ball. Kelly Donahoe is the offensive coordinator, quarterback option, pitching it out to Tuggle, getting by Loomis, then pushed out of play. Close to the first down is Andrew Tuggle as we check in with Marcus Spears. Hey man, these guys over here having fun. Hey, y'all tell them what side we on. <laughs> We're having fun over here. We're having fun over here. Hey, this game is getting real close. Hey, the run game is looking good for uh, the North, man. Hey, I'm going to get out from here and go to, in the end zone and, and celebrate. It looks like they're going to score. Big second half going for that man, Andrew Tuggle, on third down. Whitworth keeping on the quarterback option, has the first down, still fighting hard. And he's got it near the 13 yard line. And it'll be a new set of downs for the Wildcats looking poised to score here. We're going northeast, west, and south. Right now they're looking great, whoever they're calling them in there. Good quarterback sneak, works his way to the outside. Offense is starting to get on the cylinders, and this defense, you have to realize, they've been on the field for the whole second half. Ball at the 14, first and 10. Play fake, Whitworth rolling. Now gonna try to take off and run and does inside the 10 near the eight yard line before Watzlawick made the stop. And it's a gain of six yards for the Wildcat quarterback. Now right there he could have showed impatience when he rolled out. 
we have a wide receiver running a corner out and he was looking to throw it to the corner. He pulls it down because he has a defender running right behind him. He doesn't want to make that mistake and under throw the ball and have an interception. Takes it, put the ball down, spins off one, gets positive yards, keeps the drive rolling. Second down and four now for the Cats. Vaughn in motion. Toss sweep Tuggle. Vaughn trying to provide the block. Good open field stop there by Felix Figueroa. Great open field stop right there. He slow played the play. Tuggle tries to set him inside and dip back outside. He stays at home, makes a great open field tackle. Right there, closes, closes the door on him, makes a good open field tackle, puts him in a situation of third and one where they have to make a, a crucial decision on which way they're going to try to get the first. Ball at the five. Clock approaching five minutes to play in the ball game. Blue Springs down by five. 14 to nine. Third down and a yard. Tuggle is the lone setback. Vaughn in motion. They give it to Andrew and Bull, I don't know. Looks like he's spotted short. From here. Let's see here. Good defensive play by Josh Taylor for the Jags. Josh Taylor does a good job of hitting the guy and going underneath. It is fourth down, Will. Fourth and a yard. See right here, he crashes the outside and goes right underneath the block and meets him in the hole. Fans come to their feet. 10,000 plus. Fourth and one here for the Wildcats. At the five, toss sweep, Tuggle cutting it up, and he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats, their first lead of the ball game. Gutsy play on fourth and one, but you have to realize the defense is exhausted. They've been on the field the whole second half. Their offense has only been on for about six plays. And the running game has come on, and Tuggle has finished it off the drive into the end zone. So on fourth down and one from the five, Andrew Tuggle playing right now after dislocating his shoulder in the first half with a big score here. Good job. He gets the ball and goes straight back up the field into the end zone. 16-14 now, Wildcats, as we take another look. And that last drive took 15 minutes off the clock. 15 plays. 15 plays. Oh, sorry. Started inside the 10. I got my wrong stats here. Okay. Well, look at the drives in this quarter, 15 Will. 15 plays, 92 yards, and 10 plays, and 99 yards. Okay, the drive took 7 minutes and 40 seconds. Is that better? Well, they're only 12-minute quarters. That's why well, the 15 I thought it was sounded kind of funny. I thought it was in the third quarter oh, okay. all the way to the fourth. Right. See, see, there, there is right. a well, there is all a defensive, way. but I'm just trying to help you okay, out here. Okay, we're about to take oh. Kevin and <laughs> get rid of him. So after a Blue Springs timeout, the Wildcats leading by two, or make it one. It's 15-14, we'll go for the two-point conversion. Give it to Tuggle, no, came up short. He hit the ground before he stretched for the end zone. And give credit to Josh Taylor. And our score is still 15-14. to 14. And in the pitch play right there. He comes from the backside, just goes underneath the block. The second half, they have 16 rushes for 60, 69 yards and two touchdowns. Tip your cap to Andrew Tuggle. Dislocated his shoulder in the first half. But has come back in the second half. And his team now leads 15 to 14 with 4.08 to go in your ball game.
great to see a team that was down 14 to nothing come back, scratch his way back in, two turnovers, defense hold in, and then fight their way back to regain the lead. Barge with the runner. Matsky trying to field it, gets by him. Ferguson picking it up from the 15 in trouble. That's one guy missed, but collected at the 17-yard line. So Blue Springs South will start deep in their own territory, down by a point here with 4.02 to go. The squib kick has been working excellent for them because of the fact they don't give them a chance to set up their return. Allen Tice with the special team stop. This is just tough to feel here. Yeah, it flies to one, and then it goes to the next. And by the time he picks it up, the, the coverage team is right on top of him. Officially spot the football at the 18-yard line now for Blue Springs South working out of the shotgun. Figueroa going in motion. Two backs in the backfield, and now flags come out. Well played, I feel. Legal substitution coming up on Blue Springs here. First and five now after the Wildcat penalty. Karen's in the shotgun set. Rolling to his left. Now firing against his body, looking for Andy Strope incomplete. Good coverage there by Troy Pike and also Chris Miller in the secondary for Blue Springs. Second down and five now. Good job of coverage deep. They had him triangled. Just a rollout. See the whole defense moving with him in the zone. Sees the deep receiver, tries to go over the top. Having him in double coverage. And he was throwing against his body, though. That's a tough throw there. Well, you know, with all the different plays that they have, I'm surprised you don't see this, the same motion where he actually rolls out to the left, gets everybody moving, and have a guy come back out to the other side for the screen. Second and five now. Matsky in motion. Pitch it back to Brett Shamblin. Shamblin gets a nice block from Ferguson. And will get up close to the first down before he's knocked out of play. So Ferguson Shamblin in the uh, <laughs> normally plays defense. Led a nice block on the outside edge, and he waited on the block. Because the defender, you see the defender at the top of the field. See him stand there right there. If he goes up the field, he keeps him from getting hit that way. Because he waits and goes at an angle, that gives Ferguson a chance to actually set up the block. Ian Pennington, number 14, got hit there as Troy Pike knocked him out. It's going to be third down and a yard now for the Jaguars, trailing by one, under four to play in your fourth quarter. The winner to the state playoffs, the loser. The season is over with. Pitch it out. Ferguson has the first down as he dives ahead up to the 32-yard line. Big play to keep the drive alive. Run the option, pitches it out. Good dive for the first down. Troy Pike with the tackle, but nice elusiveness by Matt Ferguson, who has scored a touchdown in the ball game. First and ten. Karen's on the roll, firing and incomplete. Pass Good intended for pressure Shamblin. Pressure on the play. Finally got a little pressure right in his face so that he had to force the ball in there before he was ready. See the roll out here to the right. They're blocking back on the backside. Right here he goes and applies the pressure so he has to try to force the play into the inside. And that's the first first down of this half of Bruce Springs South. Well, that's not a good sign. Last year, keep in mind, Blue Spring South led 10-6 at halftime, had only one first down in the second half, ended up losing 20 to 10. Second down and 10 after the incompletion. 
Jonathan fires his pass, batted up in the air, intercepted by Darius Weatherspoon for the catch. They'll have it at the 39. One thing they needed to realize that they had time on the clock. They only needed to get in the field goal range. They had 312, and they were working with a second down. Second and 10. Trying to make a play, bounces up in the air. Curtis Cooper batted it up. And the transfer from Kansas City, Kansas is Washington High School. Darius Weatherspoon makes the interception. First turnover of the game for Bruce Spring South. First interception of the season for Weatherspoon. From near the 40, give it to Tuggle on the toss. Goes for about three before Julian hops on his back and brings him down. Now you see the three yards in the cloud of dust and try to kill the clock. Clock continues to roll under three minutes to play for the city bragging rights for 365 days. Take the lead in the overall series at 4-3 for the District 13 title. Check it down, give it to Andrew Tuggle. Maneuvering inside the 35 to near the 33. Op and Loomis, and also Shamblin there with the stop. Big third down play coming up. The third down and just inside five yards to go here. Need the first to secure the victory. Clock under two minutes now and continues to run. We're in the fourth quarter here. Blue Springs trailing 14 to nothing. Has rallied with 15 unanswered, unanswered points and lead by one now, 15-14. On the roll, firing Vaughn with the catch. The fullback has the first down. Takes it inside the 25 to the 24. And the fans going nuts here on the purple and gold side. Good job of play action and getting his depth around the end to buy himself some time. Good bluff. Runs open in the flat, catches, gets up the field and stays inbounds to keep, to keep the clock running. Approaching 90 seconds to play here. Wildcats trying to go to 10 and 0 on the year. First and ten, Tuggle right up the middle, some short yardage. And a timeout taken now by the Jaguars at Blue Spring South with 109 to go. the Jaguars final time out of the second half time now for our brand smart play of the game you can watch football all fall and winter from the best seats in the house on a new big screen from brand smart and the tip pass here Curtis Cooper stepping in front of the receiver Andy Strope batting in the air and Darius Weatherspoon with the interception and could secure the victory for the Wildcats tonight our brand smart play of the game the best seats in the house found only at the big screen store that is Brandsmark. There is Darius on the sidelines. A young man played at Washington High School. Coach Kelly Dono says he just runs and hits. Yeah, who is that? <laughs> Guess who that is. Oh, brother. You can tell by the chain. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. And straight up the middle, close to a first down, goes Joey Vaughn. Clock under a minute to play here. And number one, Blue Springs. As they thought would happen, you get a good game here from their crosstown rivals, Blue Springs South. Very good game. Yeah. They came out strong, put 
14 points on the board. Bruce Bruins came out in the second half, ate the clock up. And he just sort of took it and ran, got their score in the third, then their score in the fourth. And now they're trying to put the game away. 57.5 left on the clock. Officially now one timeout left for the Jaguars. It's going to be third down and one for Blue Springs. But boy, I tell you what, Blue Springs South, gutty effort tonight. Only Donahoe had his work cut out for him. Coming from down 14 to nothing. A lot of people said the Jaguars weren't going to be very good this year. Maybe a 500 team, maybe four and six, but they've proven everybody wrong. They had a great season as Tuggle. Going for the first down, going to be close here. It looks like he has acquired it. Clock continues to roll, so Greg Oder in his first year doing a great job. And this team going to finish up eight and two, barring any craziness here. 43.3 seconds to go. We're going to bring in the chain gang to take a look at this here. I also have to give uh, Blue Springs some credit tonight. You know, they didn't panic. They're down 14 to nothing. They had some turnovers. and going to be just a little bit short here. some time to think about it and now a timeout taken by Blue Springs South with 43 and three tenths of a second next week we've got Kansas 6a substate Friday night 7 p.m. and then uh, next week we'll tape a ball game on Wednesday the Missouri sectional match between Oak Park and Rockhurst that will air Friday 10:30 p.m. So plenty of Missouri and Kansas state playoff football here on Metro Sports. Robert Taylor on the side for the Blue Springs Wildcats. One of the many seniors. Robert Taylor, a good ball game. Kelly Donahoe talking to his troops. And Never gave up in this ball game after down by margins of seven to nothing and fourteen to nothing. They show excellent poise in this game to just sort of settle their guys and keep them in, even though they start off the game a little high strung. Fourth down and less than a yard, they'll go for it. And woo. That second surge may have got him the first down, but Whitworth initially looked like he was stopped. Yeah, they had a surge inside to actually keep him far. He sort of bounced it outside and pulled his way away from one person. They're going to bring in the chain gang to measure once again. So many outstanding players have played in this series. There's Jamar Mosey now at Oklahoma. Liddell Betts, the Iowa running back. It's on pace to become the all-time leading rusher in Iowa Hawkeyes history. It is a first down. Casey Waterman, now the quarterback at Missouri Western, played at Blue Springs South. And Brandon Lloyd, a wide receiver at the University of Illinois. John Garrison, a center with Nebraska. So big name players, big time coaches, and big time games when these two teams get together. It's the old sports cliche throw out the records it doesn't matter the records this year combined record of 17 and one two good football teams and it looks like the Wildcats will go to the state playoffs for the second year in a row as they'll be the champions of the suburban Big 8 conference as they finish with a perfect record as they beat crosstown rivals tonight the Jaguars of Blue Springs South the clock as wound out, final score, Blue Springs 15, Blue Springs South 14.
back to wrap things up in our Ivy High School Game of the Week after this timeout. The High School Game of the Week is brought to you by High V and their 20 Kansas City area employee-owned High V locations. Farmers Insurance and these Kansas City Metro agents. Contact your local farmers agent today. Remember, farmers get you back where you belong. Brandsmart, the big screen store. Casey Bobcat in Blue Springs, Grandview, and Olathe. And by AMC Theaters. Blue Springs down 14 to nothing at one point in the first half. Come up with 15 unanswered points. And beat their crosstown rivals 15-14 and advance to the state playoffs this is time now to check our players of the game brought to you by your kansas city metro farmers insurance agents farmers insurance can help you get things back where they once were contact your local farmers insurance agent for coverage it's right for you remember farmers get you back where you belong jonathan karens good night will 12 of 18 173 passing yards very good night and on the other side all guts Playing with a dislocated shoulder from the first half. What a second half Andrew Tuggle had. Greenback played extremely well in the second half. Of course, their offense was on the field a lot longer than they were in the first, first half. Gave them the opportunity to get in the groove and to get in the end zone a couple times. How about the two drives tonight? 99 and 92 yards in the second half. I thought those were critical. Blue Springs never panicked. Turned the football over. They got down by two touchdowns. But those second half drives... Those multiple play drives of 90 plus yards, the difference. Well, they were the difference maker. It set the tone when they came out and they went 99 yards and put it in the end zone. Then they go, hey, guess what? We're going to come back and go, you know, 89 again and actually put it into the end zone again. And they played strong. Their defense stiffened up. But the one thing they did uh, really well is they kept their defense off the field in the second half. So the Wildcats of Blue Springs go to 10 and 0 and they will be the champions of the District 13. They'll take on the District 14 champions next Wednesday in the state playoffs for Blue Springs South. They end their season a very good one at 8 and correction 8 and 2. Our producer tonight Steve Kurtenbach for Will Shields, Marcus Spears and our entire Metro Sports crew. Kevin White saying goodnight from the PB Stadium in Blue Springs, Missouri where the cat fight goes to the Wildcats. Blue Springs wins it 15-14. Good night everybody.